Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear. And I'm a reader and a writer. Yes, I am wearing the same clothes as my last video. And yes, I realize I said in that video that I was still reading this book. And for when the week cut off, as of the 14th, I was still rereading this book. So for my second week wrap up, Yes, I was still reading it, but I have since finished The Bone Ship's Wake by R.J. Barker, and this is my review of it. This is number three in the Tide Child series. There is no way I can talk about this book and not give spoilers for the series. So, for the first part of this book, where it will be non-spoilers for the book, there are going to be spoilers for the book one and two. If you're a non-spoiler person, please come back after you read the series because you should read the series. Otherwise, unless you're like me and you don't mind spoilers, we're not weird, I promise, then you need to stick around. The Bone Ship's Wake picks up about a year after the Call of the Bone Ships ends, where Jorn has become the feared black pirate. He is searching for Maeus Gilbrin in an effort to bring her back, or to get her back, and he has gone the way of revenge which is a very stark contrast to where Maeus was really wanting to build a society of peace. Everywhere that Jorn is turning to the Got Islanders, to the Hundred Islands? Hundred Islanders? I don't know what they're called anymore. On the leadership and those in power just want to retain power and want to continue with the war, especially as more Kishans, or sea dragons, have been found and seen in the seas. Now the Black Pirate has been whittling down the Hundred Islands ships, and so 13 Burn Gilbrin, yet who is Maeus's mother, has drawn her fleet back closer to Burnshulm, the capital city, from all the searching that the Black Pirate and his crew have done. They're pretty sure that Maeus is in the capital, and so they concoct a plan to get him in to go find her. At the same time, Joran is questioning his sanity because his rot sickness, or the Kishan rot as they call it, has continued to grow um, to the point where as the Black Pirate he actually wears a scarf over his face so people don't see the sores there. And the sores have continued to grow and the sickness is getting worse. He's struggling with the sickness also because it makes people go mad. And so he's second guessing himself on whether or not the orders he's giving are good orders or are the result of madness. So that's just kind of the setup of what's going on. All of that is within the first couple chapters. So again, not spoilers for the book. This book is beautiful. And how it ends was not what I was expecting. However, after the ending happened, I could tell that everything had been set up from the first book. So the ending is intentional, not slapdash, and it is amazing and gorgeous, and the author nailed it. The layering that the author did with the religion and the politics and how it all kind of builds on top of one another. I really like how Barker uses the progression of time to cover things. So we don't see Jorn become the Black Pirate when we pick up with him. He is the Black Pirate. He's already been doing this. And you don't feel like you have messed out or missed anything from how his thought process went to Maeus is gone. What do we do? Oh shit, I'm now in charge to becoming the Black Pirate. It's Jorn. It, it fits his personality from the first book when Maeus took the captain's hat from him and he wanted vengeance, wanted revenge. That is a Joran thing to do. It makes sense. So again, you don't feel like you have missed out with the passage of time. And so picking up like about a year afterwards, it's a, it, you're fine. You'll, you'll be fine. <laughs> and then the character work with this, there, there are trigger warnings for this book. And the trigger warnings probably spoil a little bit more of the book. But it, again, it's in the first few chapters. So, okay. It, it, I think it's okay still. Um, trigger warning for torture and for trauma on top of trauma and death. I mean, this is a grimdark pirate 
fantasy on the sea, no one is safe. And he continues that in this book as well, no one is safe. The characters feel real, the how they react to the trauma that they have suffered feels real. This is not a series without repercussions. People have to deal with the trauma that they have gone through. I am now going to go into the spoiler section, so if you want to hear my final thoughts, go ahead and jump past that. I will have it chaptered down below for you. There's so just so much to say, and I am going to have to talk freely in order to do this. Spoilers, here we are. I love the relationship that Quell and Joran have created amongst themselves, especially with how the relationship started off in the first book where Joran's like, oh shit, she's going to kill me, to now she kills to protect him and really truly is his shadow and nothing that he does is hidden from her. But yet they're still not exactly friends. And it's interesting how Quella always has talked about, I'm a survivor, I'm a survivor, and then she does survive in the very end. And she's not someone I feel like has plot armor in the book because she's just a badass when it comes to killing people, so you can see exactly why she has survived. Now, the character that I do feel like has had plot armor in this series. I didn't feel like that after the first book, but definitely I felt like it in the second book and even into here is Ferris, who is the deck childer who had suffered burns and then had the trauma of fire on the ship and was one of the first supporters of Joran. And so in this book, she is now deck holder or she's been promoted to deck holder. And he's noticing that her and another crew member are interested in one another and that is against burn law on the ships a man may sleep with a man a woman may sleep with a woman but you don't want to have a child on the sea that's not a good thing in their minds so he asks Salamufas to step in and say something instead of doing it himself I don't know he chickened out let's be honest he he chickened out it was his responsibility and he gave it to someone else to do. And I feel like when she did become pregnant, yes, she accepted her fate, but then Salamufas sacrificing himself for her, I, I just felt like she had plot armor. Now, don't get me wrong, I like Ferris. Everybody else that, you know, he has a sort of relationship with has died, like Dinell. His ship was destroyed in the second, at the end of the second book. I'm just this whole book going, oh, Ferris is going to die. I mean, he's just saving Ferris to kill at the end. No, no, she s survives. And I'm like, that was not the ending I was expecting at all. But on the other hand, something that was fun is he did give us an, oh shit, Solomufus is going to die moment way before he sacrifices himself. With each book, we've gotten to see more of an expansion of this world I don't think the map is in the front is actually like a faithful representation of the world, but you can see that it's bigger than what they're actually working with. And in the first book, it's really Tide Child was their focus and the scare of spine in the middle. And then in the second book, you get to see more islands. And in this book, we now get to go to the Gaunt, Island, Gaunt Islands as well. And so you really get an expansion. They went to places that they hadn't been before, or we got to meet other deadly creatures of the sea. And we got to see Tai Child be wrecked again and again. And Tai Child really is a character in and of itself in this book. Tai Child is the ship, the black ship that they are on. And it's also the prophecy, or basically what people call Maus. As a reminder in this world, the first child born of a woman if the woman survives and the child is not burn cast or deformed in some way that child is sacrificed to the gods on one of the bone ships and Maus is the eldest of the 13 burn 13 burn meaning she's had 13 kids or 13 births and when the hag priest went to kill her she did not die i think a like a wave came and saved her basically and so there are many hag priests who aren't happy that she has survived into un, unto adulthood because in their mind she was the eldest she should have been killed just because it didn't work the first time or the second time they should have still been able to kill her so 
Mace is called Tide Child as well. And then when she ends up on the Tide Child. In this book, you do get to find out the reason why Mace ended up on the black ship. And I'm not telling you because it, it's very interesting. And I think on the reread of this series, because I'm definitely buying it, I will probably pick up more of how that experience has affected her as a commander. Yes, Joran does find Maeus again. Maeus was tortured and is dealing with the trauma of that. And Joran is watching her. And if you have a loved one who has PTSD, you can understand what Joran is experiencing watching Maeus. Because Maeus has the PTSD and the trauma. And Joran is trying to help her and support her. And that's really all you can do with someone who has PTSD. You can't take away their pain. You can't take away their experiences. You can only just be there for them. And I think Barker did a really great job displaying that. And then also showing how there'll be moments of depression, but then moments where they're capable of being quote unquote normal. So I love at the ending how, and if you have not read the books, I, I'm going to spoil the ending right now because there's just, <laughs> just because there are certain thing, elements that happen with the ending that relate to the whole series that I want to talk about. So, and here's another chance to jump for, to jump to, here's another chance to jump to the outro if you absolutely do not want the ending spoiled. The Golem helps him through this North Storm that opens the door into a new world and Joran has to kill her. And they talk about how Hasseth shot, or how Hasseth sent his spear through Scarith and how he caused all this trauma and this bad and everything. And then Joran basically does the same thing. However, that was what he needed to do. So with this, you, with this book, you also get to see Joran have more flashbacks of other iterations of the world, very similar to the fifth season, where this world has different epoch, epochs of time. And the Golem, the Windseer, and the Caller basically are those who end one, their purpose is to end one era of time, one epoch, one epoch of time, and then other people get to go forward and live. Getting to see how, oh, that is how the current world came to be. And you wonder, oh, are they just going to repeat it in the next world? And it gives you an epilogue to so know it looks like they have decided to have a more fair society. And then having Guria, basically the medic on the ship, and finding out that she's the hag. She's the hag goddess of this world. And has been with them this whole time, basically leading them to, like, she knows this world has to end and the next one has to start. And let's continue forward. And is that, you know, trying to guide them to do what they need to do. And it was amazing. The only thing I really didn't like about this book is in the first two books, the Galame are, they're called it and referred to as they. I mean, they're not human, so their pronouns are very different. And I was okay with that. And so then this one, all of a sudden, no, wind talkers are female and the wind shorn are male. And I didn't like that element. Now, how it ended, it works. But I did not like that when it was first introduced into here. Because I had gotten so used to, I don't know, thinking of the Golem as another entity that does not have the same human conventions. I think that's the best way I can describe it. And so, like I said, I didn't like that element at first. And how it's ended? Okay, I'm, I'm okay with it. It's better than I thought for my outro thoughts. I really, really enjoy this series, and I really enjoy this book. I'm definitely going to be nominating this for the Hugos for Best book of 2021 and also for the best series because more people need to read this. Let me let me put it this way. P these are people who have blurbed this book or 
one of the books in this series, Adrian Tchaikovsky, Evan Winter, John Gwen, um, Robin Hobb. These are big name fantasy authors, and this book still has not gotten the love it deserves, or this series has not gotten the love that it deserves. So if you have not read this series, or have only read the first book, please read them. They, they really are amazing. This is a trilogy. It's done. So if you're someone who doesn't want to read something until it's done, it's done now. Go read it. It is very much worth your time. Again, perfect for people who are fans of Grimdark. You know, if you like Joe Amber Crombie, you're probably going to really like this. And yeah, that's all I have to say. Actually, I am going to say, if you have read this or read one of the books in the series, please let me know down below and let me know how you have enjoyed it. Thank you and have a great day.